Hi, my name is Dan St. Hilaire. I'm a service adoption specialist and consultant, as well as in-house MVP here at KnowledgeWave for Office 365 apps and services. A lot of what I do nowadays is work internally with my team and our clients around adoption and change management specific, um, most of the time right now for Microsoft Teams. Today, I wanted to share with you a process around managing governance with templates within Microsoft Teams, providing a way for your users to self-service Teams when they need them, while at the same time, you're able as an organization to maintain some governance and compliance around the team deployment process. Enabling governance within your organization is something that every business needs to consider and think about. I understand the speed to deployment of Microsoft Teams recently may have delayed this conversation for a lot of businesses, put it on the back burner, but now is the time to start to think about and reevaluate what those requirements are. You'll want to identify whether you want to have things like information barriers in place. What about expiration policies? What do you do with archiving when a project or a team expires or reaches end of life? Do you want to have prefixes or suffixes or any other type of naming uh, conventions? And you're doing this in order to remain compliant. And what you want to do at the same time is make sure that you're addressing the need to support end users' productivity and providing that in a process that enables self-service options, but still maintain the governance that you have in place. A good governance process allows IT to be more of a guide that promotes productivity within an organization. A templated process that I'll show you today will enable IT to be that guide. Being a guide versus being a guard that prevents and limits users uh, from being able to create the, the teams for the projects that they need. If IT can act as a guide for enabling user productivity versus a guard that stops them in the gate and limits their activity, you'll have better user adoption of Office 365. In regards to user adoption and what is not, it's not a hundreds or thousands of teams. I hear this often. Let's just leave it open and let users create the teams or sites they need. Just want to be clear, hundreds and thousands of teams isn't user adoption. What it is, it's, it's just a lot of teams, right? We're talking a lot of teams. So providing a way for users to provision teams that they, they need in a governed format will also bring that user adoption. You don't want to just leave. And I just want to be clear, it is my opinion that you don't leave that open. So what I'll show you is a process where you can provide the ability to create those teams. So just by providing some basic governance, you can enable them to create their own teams as they need them. And doing that allows you to provide solutions they need to be productive where they're not finding workarounds and using technology that doesn't or hasn't been approved by your organization. So it's going to limit those shadow IT problems and you'll be able to be more of a guide and direct those users on a path that aligns with the provisioning process that meets your governance. So a templated approach to governance allows self-service of teams when a user needs them. It can include an approval process if you want to have that. You can also allow and have the ability to build new teams very rapidly. And those teams that you are building can be totally provisioned with predefined channels, a channel structure, files and tabs. You can populate pre-existing files. You can even provision a planner complete with board buckets and tasks. So let's look at a templated teams provisioning process. Uh, we're looking right now at uh, Grady Archie's screen. So Grady is an employee that's a member of this particular company. And what I'd like to do is show how Grady can provision or request a new team that has some governance in place. And we'll actually create a team that's complete with different channels, files and tabs, as well as a planner. So we can see on the left where uh, Grady is currently a member of the Mark 8 team, the Sales and Marketing, the Cognos, and the Digital in Initiative Public Relations teams. We're going to create a new project uh, team for him based on our template process. And I'd like to just visualize, I'm going to slide over another screen, and I want to show you the administrator view where we've created uh, that particular template. So we've got files, I've got a budget tab complete with a link to a particular Excel file, for example. And we're going to replicate this particular process 
um, with GREE. So he's going to provision this particular project. Now, part of the process we've implemented is a home button. Uh, so this is another location using this templated process that users can go to access all of their different teams. So these are those same teams that we saw just a minute ago in the team structure. And again, I'm just going to flash back so you can visualize that. So those are the same teams that you see under teams, but on the home tab, it's just another way to access those. Leveraging this home tab uh, process also allows Grady to create or request a new team. And he would do that from here. So that's different than what most organizations do. If we go back to teams down on the bottom, we've used PowerShell to turn off the ability for this particular user uh, or all users generally to create those teams. So they can certainly go and join a team if they have the code. There is no create team tile here. Uh, so the only way that Grady can create that team is to come through this particular process. Uh, so we'll go ahead and provision a team or request a team as an employee. We would click here and click new team. And on that administrator profile that I showed, uh, we had a master template for project management. We also have one for construction. So you can have a number of different templates. You could have 10, 20, 30, whatever is most appropriate that defines and aligns with that governance. In the demo here, I just have two templates and uh, we're going to go through the process where Greedy requests the project management team. So we'll go ahead and click this and he's prompted with information that he needs to fill out. And if you watch down here, the preview of the different conventions. So we have to name this project team and we'll call it ABC project. And you can see that it actually labels it USA. So that's a particular tag that looks back to Active Directory uh, in Azure, understands that Greedy is US based and automatically tagging that team with that suffix. So if he was in Canada, maybe list Canada or however the template is designed to go back and, and reference. Um, so he'll add a, a, a quick little description here. The welcome message is what's displayed when somebody actually joins that team. So we'll just keep it simple here. Here's where we can define who the owner is going to be. Um, we'll go ahead and make the mod uh, an order. There are options with templates to define who those owners are. So by default, if we're creating a project management template, the project manager or the senior project manager could automatically be defined as an owner. So even though Grady is creating that, different owners can be defined. And you can limit some of this functionality as well. So Grady could create this particular uh, team um, and not necessarily have control over that owner. Uh, we can add members and the same thing holds true here. Um, if you want to have all project managers automatically a member, you would define that in your template when you're creating that. And again, we're not necessarily showing you how to create the templates today, showing you the concept of how the template process works for governance. So Grady will automatically be a, a member of this particular one. So I'm going to go ahead and send this particular request out. You can behind the scenes, I'm not showing it in this video, but you can have an authorization process. It would have to go through a process flow where maybe it's a manager and then IT ultimately approves. So they may have checklist items they want to review and see what's actually happening. So this is a team photo that had been recently updated a few seconds ago. So depending on um, the complexity of your template and how many teams, channels, and content you're bringing over, this process may take a little while. If it's a very simple team that just has a couple channels and maybe a few tabs predefined, this process can be extremely quick. All right, great. It looks like it was provisioned. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Uh, Grady probably would have just requested this and went on to his next work responsibility. But we'll come in here now and go back to Teams. As we look at the teams that Grady currently has now, the, the previous teams are still there. And we also see the new team that he created through the template process, uh, the ABC project team. The uh, USA was added automatically as a suffix based on his Azure Active Directory settings and how we set up that template. And if we expand to see the different channels, uh, those channels are going to line up with the same channels that we saw uh, within that master template just a few minutes ago on the admin account. So I can actually click into budget. 
Uh, the files uh, are here, and I'll show you that. We'll pull over that other uh, template in just a moment. So this is a starting template. This is actually a link that I displayed uh, in the admin account. So we'll see the budget template, starting template load here uh, for Grady. Uh, let me slide over the uh, account for administrator, just to visual, give you that visualization. I'll expand that here. Uh, so again, this was our master template. And that's the same budget. Uh, if we were to come up here, we'll see the same files that Grady now has access to. It'll just be the uh, budget template. Note down here, we've got the ABC project team. Uh, when we created that team using the templates, we made this particular admin account an owner. And this account is now a member of that team as well. So it's going to follow that, the budget, the files will be consistent throughout that uh, user experience. On our master template as well on the general channel, we had a uh, planner. So again, this master is the template and that planner was created previously as part of this template where we had a drop lane, a planning, um, and we could certainly customize this even further with additional buckets and pre-configured cards or tasks, uh, but that was duplicated uh, when Grady created this particular as well. So we can look here and if we go to the general of this team, We've got our planner here. Planner board complete with cards and starting tasks was also provisioned. Let's look back at Grady one more time and we can see that structure is there. If I go to the general team that was created, uh, there's our project planner. And we can see those starting tabs. If we look at the management, you can see where Grady was actually an owner automatically by creating this particular team and we added the mod administrator. Had we added additional members, they would be listed down here. So that's a quick overview of using templates to define governance within Microsoft Teams. Remember, using a templated policy can help provide guided governance. It also enables your users to self-service and provision teams within that governance that's defined. And the templated process can assist with user adoption for Microsoft Teams. So for more information on our services or learning how templates might be helpful within your organization, please reach out to us at knowledgewave.com or 800-831-8449.